What's up everybody? It's your boy Meeper. I look crazy right now. It's because all day today I was, um, not all day, for the past couple hours I've been trying to figure out syncing with my NAS server um, through syncing. Think, sy sync thing seems really interesting. Looking into it. Intre it's like those Elon Musk tweets. Interesting. Looking into this. Uh, for breakfast I had... Some chili, that was good. Uh, and for dinner, we had pizza, and that was also good. I'm just hanging out today. Uh, I so yeah, so today I was taking notes on the paragraph we're supposed to write our essay on in English 101, and it's uh, Society and Culture by Hannah Arendt. And I was like, man, I've heard about this obsidian thing. This streamer I watch uses obsidian, and I was like, man, I should probably use this. And so here it is. Bang. Let me optimize this. There we go. So basically, the way sync, the, the the way Obsidian works is basically like you just have this paragraph, right, that I'm writing, that that I that's in society and culture. But you'll notice all these hyperlinks, right? So under modern conditions, comma this hiatus, right? So it's like, oh, modern conditions. Well, hmm, okay. Let me just let me make a new note. Test. And then let me make another new note. Uh, food. Right. So um, you can be like, this is an example of the test file. Some would use, and this is the crazy part, you would do open square bracket, open square bracket, food. And then you link the food note. So it's like someone used food as a test file. And then you click on food and it brings you to the food file. It's like, I love test. All right, so now, now you have these two linked things and you look at your little graph and you have food and test that are linked. And it's like, because they're both linking to each other. So, Sorry, I was doing this on my laptop. Um, yes. uh, so, uh, this is my tree view, right? Um, and it's really simple. A lot of people have it zoomed out and they have thousands of dots and it's really crazy looking, but they've been doing it for a few months or a couple years and this is just for today. So, um, this is basically where the paragraph starts out. And it's like, oh, under modern conditions. So you click on modern conditions. Um, modern conditions is referring to what happens to culture under mass society. And it's like, okay, under modern conditions, this hiatus. Okay, this hiatus. Um, there are three types of time in society and culture. There's leftover time, leisure time, and vacant time. And, uh, you know, uh, this is the quote, hiatus in the biologically conditioned cycle of labor. The nature of vacant time is also to be wild away by entertainment. So definition of vacant time. It appears that vacant time is defined with a cycle of three parts. A cycle of three parts, what's that? Oh, it brings me to this life process note. And this life process shows the cycle. So sleep, work, and vacant time. And then this vacant time is filled with entertainment that goes to sleep, right? Um, so cool, you know, so we go back, vacant time, and uh, so when it talks about this hiatus, it's referring to the um, hiatus between s vacant time and sleep. That is, um, it's, it's referring to the time that isn't sleep or work, right? That's what vacant time is, and that's what the hiatus is. So let's go back. Under modern conditions, which is um, what happens to culture under mass society, this hiatus, and that's referring to the vacant time hiatus, it's constantly growing. There is more and more time free that must be filled with entertainment. Click on entertainment. Uh, so, and uh, why is, oh that, okay. Um, and later in the essay, she refers to this like Latin term, it's bread and circuses. And uh, it's like the theory, it's like a Latin term and it's like sustenance and entertainment provided by the government to appease public discontent, right? And so entertainment, is like a commodity could be to be consumed like food right and you're like okay so we go back 
that must be filled with entertainment, like food, right? But this enormous increase in vacant time does not change the nature of the time. You click on this, it brings you back to this hiatus, which is vacant time, because the nature of this hiatus is still vacant, right? Entertainment, like labor and sleep, is irre irre irrevocably, irre irre irrevocably part of the biological life process. Biological life is always, whether one is laboring or at rest, engaged in consumption or the passive perception of amusement. Okay, what's consumption? So let's click on this. Consumption is regularly spoken about in society and culture. Consumption is how humans while away vacant time, right, through entertainment. Okay. So, engage in consumption or in the passive reception of amusement, a metabolism feeding on things by devouring them. The commodities the entertainment industry offers are not things. Cultural objects whose excellence is measured by their ability to withstand the life process and to become permanent appurtenances of the world. And they should not be judged according to these standards, nor are they values which exist to be used and exchanged. They are rather consumer goods destined to be used up as are any other consumer goods. So destined to be used up, um, that uh, brings us to the two anti-cultural processes, which he describes later. The two anti-cultural processes is cultural devaluation through cultural philistines, uh, which isn't really talked about in this paragraph, but it's basically like um, people who trade art as sort of social currency, uh, like think like like bourgeois, right? Back before you know the the masses, so to speak, were able to like read, right? They they would be educated, um, and you know they would uh, have a reason to to they would be trading this art around and it would devalue, it would be wear it down like an old coin, as it said here, right? Just, just read my notes. Um, but yeah, so um, destined to be used up is referring to cultural destruction through consumption. That's actually the second anti-cultural process. And that happens, you know, that that the phenomena of cultural destruction through consumption is referring to the concept of humans needing entertainment to while away vacant time. And uh, later in the essay, she also talks about this sort of cycle where um, cultural objects turn into things to be consumed, right? Uh, and so that's what she's referring to when she talks about the cultural destruction through consumption. So destined to be used up, that's what she means. Uh, they are not things, cultural objects. So cultural objects. Cultural objects are different from entertainment, which is just made to be consumed. Cultural objects are, quote, measured by their ability to withstand the life process, and again, that's that flow chart, and become permanent appurtenances of the world, to become a thing. Something is a cultural object if it withstands the life process and becomes part of the world. So, cultural objects whose excellence is they're measured by their ability to withstand the life process, and, yeah, and they should not be judged according to these standards. That's referring to this note down here, you may have seen this. Arendt talks about how people view entertainment and society and culture on the same level as cultural and artistic objects. And now she thinks that people are mistaken when doing this. And not to interpret what Arendt is saying, because it's on the page, but um, it does say they should not be judged according to these standards. Uh, so, you know, that's what I, what I got. Um, nor are they values which exist to be used and exchanged. And used and exchanged is referring to the cultural devaluation, um, like an old coin, right? Um, they are rather consumer goods destined to be used up. So then you have this, right? And so all this links together. I also have the PDF here. Um, all this links together, yada, yada, yada. Can I actually show this? Hold on. We're good. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah, and we have all this stuff, and it's cool because it's all linked, right? Because it's linked together in the tree view, and you can see the links. There's actually a little animation you can watch. Look. Isn't that cool, you guys? You can see how cultural philistinism is created as sort of a one-off thing, and then it connects to another thing. Look, there it is, and then? Look, it connects. Then it connects to anti-cultural processes. Oh, and where does it connect? What? Where does anti-cultural... 
Oh no, lots of things point to anti-cultural processes. Sorry guys, yeah, if I look at arrows, it's things that are pointing here. But how is, what? Oh my bad, I was looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, of course. Of course, anti-cultural processes points to a lot of things because it has a lot of links on it. But yeah, it's all generally really cool. And it's, um, you know, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, it costs $8 a month. I, I got it signed up with a student discount. Shout out student discounts because they're everywhere and they're so... They're so, sorry, I just read something. Uh, it's pretty expensive. It's like $50 a year or something stupid like that to sync it across devices. But um, I was trying to set up something with sync thing, like I said earlier. We'll see how that turns out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, see you, dude.